we left off last time, we had finished shaping the boards, we had done the rails, so we're back to a layup stage uh, for the top skin. In this case, it's the top structural skin. So I'm doing a single layer of six ounce unidirectional carbon fiber, and I'm gonna vacuum bag that down. So some of the uh, products that you need in order to vacuum bag, uh, obviously you need your glass, and you'll need your epoxy. I'll be using Total Boat uh, epoxy for mine five and one. And in addition, you need breather, uh, to let the air flow into the vacuum bag. You need peel ply, which allows you to release your breather and gives you a nice flat surface for your carbon. And then you obviously need your vacuum bag and your vacuum as well. So I'll be painting on epoxy onto the board first. I'll be laying down the carbon dry. I'll be painting over that. If you're by yourself, you'd want to use a slow epoxy. Uh, the big thing when working with epoxy is if the epoxy is mixed in a pot, then it wants to kick very quick. It wants to go off very quick because the heat that it produces and then the heat it produces helps accelerate the reaction. So if you can start spreading as soon as you can once you mix the epoxy, you'll have more time to work with it. So you'll, you'll notice that we mix it quite quickly and then we spread out as much as we can quite quickly. Uh, so we have more time to work before we heat it after. So we peeled off the vacuum bag, uh, the breather and the peel ply, and you're left with kind of a matte black finish on the carbon. So this isn't what the final product will look like, this is just what the structural carbon looks like for now. And luckily we had a nice tight bond all the way through with very few air bubbles, so we're really happy with that. After that, I worked on some sanding and I worked out channels in the back and front of the board on the tip and tail. So you can kind of see them here in the camera. And I use an angle grinder because it's quite a lot of material to remove, but it's over a large distance. So I use an angle grinder and then a long board to fair the surface after I removed a lot of the material. The next step is going to be to lay a structural layer of carbon on the bottom. Uh, the only difference between this and the process before is that I'll be using an envelope bag instead of actually doing the process on the mold. The reason is because I've now shaped the channels in, but the mold doesn't have those channels on it. So if I were to try and vacuum bag on the mold, I would end up crushing the board. So we first paint the uh, foam with epoxy just to make sure that it's fully saturated. The epoxy we're using in this case is uh, Total Boat 5, five to 1 epoxy. Pretty simple to use, uh, it's five to one. Uh, we just use a measuring cup and do 10 ounces and then another two ounces of hardener. So 10 ounces of epoxy, two ounces of hardener. You mix it up, make sure it's well mixed. In this case, I'm using a fast cure epoxy. I have two people to help with this, uh, as you can see. So that helps move quick. So I can use a fast epoxy, heat it, and hopefully have the board done by Christmas. The only real difference between working with the carbon and the fiberglass is you can't tell when the, the carbon is wet out. You can't see when it's fully clear as opposed to the fiberglass. But everything else is pretty much the same except it's a bit more expensive and it's much stiffer and a bit stronger. One trick is to make sure that the carbon fiber is laying nice and flat so you'll see us pressing the carbon fiber into the foam, especially in the corners. It's really important. And the vacuum bag will help with that, but if you don't help that along originally and you don't get enough epoxy in there, the vacuum bag won't be able to bridge that gap. We then put the peel ply on, put the breather on just the same as before, and then the only difference this time is we use an envelope bag instead of working on the mold. That's because we have channels now shaped into the board, which aren't shaped into the mold, and that was intentional because it's pretty complex to have the channel shaped into the mold. It's just time consuming more than anything. So I shaped the channels into the board knowing that the top skin would hold the shape, and I used an envelope bag to pull the carbon to the foam and make sure we had a nice tight bond. Once we had that, we heated the whole thing because I'm on a time crunch, so we put two space heaters on it and waited about three and a half, four hours before it was cured. And actually the epoxy wasn't fully cured, uh, but it was cured enough to sand. So we were kind of careful with it when we pulled it out. Sanded the edges down nice and flat. Didn't go too far because you'll end up burning through your two layers of carbon fiber. Uh, now you have a nice clean shape. So the next step was to insert the mounting hardware for the bindings. This is kind of a tricky part. Uh, the first step is just measuring out what you need. You needed to find the center line of the board, relatively simple, uh, using two people and a straight edge across the center. And then the next step after that is to install the hardware. And the mounting hardware is one of the cruxes of the project because you need to be able to screw in hardware from the top and there's no through bolting allowed on the board because you don't want to mess up your performance on the bottom. I use little hardware um, with teeth and threaded inserts, essentially, drilled out big holes and I then inserted set screws covered in wax into each one of the uh, threaded inserts so that when they're sunk into the epoxy, the epoxy won't bind the holes and close the holes. Inserted the threaded inserts with uh, Thixo, Total Boat Thixo, which worked really, really well in this case, and I used a fast uh, Thixo so I could move quickly. So I then have the option to back out the set screws, and I have nice clean holes and hopefully a nice flush 
surface to use my next layer of carbon fiber on.